हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू सेशन नंबर फाइव इन मॉड्यूल नंबर टू डीजल इंजन पावर सिस्टम एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई विल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन इंजन कूलिंग सिस्टम वेर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट इन ऑन द नेसेसिटी ऑफ इंजन कूलिंग सिस्टम एंड द टाइप्स ऑफ इंजन कूलिंग सिस्टम engine cooling system so uh, before going to see what are the types of uh, engine cooling system we will see what is the necessary necessity of engine cooling system okay so we know that in an ic engine the temperature of the gases inside the engine cylinder may vary from 35 degree centigrade in uh, in uh, lesser case and to uh, as high as 2750 degree centigrade during this cycle uh, be because um, yeah, the combustion uh, during the combustion of uh, diesel fuel inside the engine a high amount of heat is released okay uh, so if an engine is allowed to run without any external uh, cooling without any external cooling the cylinder wall cylinder and piston will tend to assume the average temperature of the gases to which they are exposed okay so which may be in the order of uh, 1000 2500 500 and even more uh, degree centigrade obviously at a such a high temperature the metals will lose their uh, characteristics and the piston will ten, uh, ten, uh, will expand considerably and cease in the seizing of liner will take place of course theoretically uh, the thermal efficiency of the engine will improve without cooling but uh, it is not uh, uh, not able to uh, do practically uh, so in actual uh, the engine will cease to run if you if you want uh, adopt uh, any external cooling cooling system so if the cylinder uh, wall temperature is allowed to rise above a certain limit about 65 degrees centigrade the duplicating oil will begin to evaporate rapidly and both cylinder and piston may be damaged so uh, at a very high uh, temperature uh, may cause excessive stress in some parts of uh, uh, engine or rendering uh, Uh, them useless in uh, further operations okay uh, in looking into this aspect also we we know uh, we have to adopt some uh, external cooling system for uh, engine so the, the cooling system is provided in an engine for the uh, following uh, reason one is even expansion of piston in the cylinder may result in seizure of uh, uh seizing of the piston high temperature reduces the strength of the piston and cylinder liner overheated cylinder may lead to pre ignition of the charge in case of spark ignition uh, spark ignition engine physical and chemical changes may occur in lubricating oil which may cause sticking of piston rings and excessive wear of uh, cylinder next we will see what are the methods of cooling cooling the engine one is air cooling and second one is water cooling okay so these are the uh, methods you know, we will uh, try to study uh, try to understand uh, the air cooling how air cooling system works and uh, how water cooling system work what are the types okay next air cooling system so it is the direct method of uh, cooling so this diagram will Uh, explain or uh, will explain air cooled engine so here you can see uh, a fan okay uh, and air re air regulator and uh, there is a ducting where uh, hot uh, it is exposed to engine okay okay and uh, in this method heat is carried away by the air flowing over the over and around the engine cylinder okay air is carrying uh, that heat it is used in scooters or motorcycles etc so here uh, in air cooled engines fins are cast on the cylinder head and cylinder barrel 
to increase the exposed surface contact with air so if you increase the surface area exposure of surface area the more amount of heat heat is um, uh, carried by the uh, air because air is come in contact uh, at the uh, fins so more area is exposed okay so then uh, uh, advantages of this uh, type of uh, cooling system is there is no water jacket is required so it is very simple system uh, no danger of uh, coolant leakage okay because air is used as a uh, cooling media and it is very light in weight because there is no pump there is no uh, water jacket okay it is very light in weight easy installation these are the uh, advantages of air cooling system um water cooling in this cooling system the engines uh, the cylinder walls and heads are provided with jackets through which cooling uh, water can circulate the heat is transferred from the cylinder wall and uh, uh, cylinder walls to the uh, water by convection and conduction the liquid becomes heated in its passage through the jackets and is itself cooled by means of an air cooled radiator system the heat from the uh, water in turn transferred to air okay and uh, a cooled water is again circulated in the water jacket there are uh, two types of uh, water uh, cooling system one is called as open or single circuit system and uh, this is the flow diagram so here you can see this is a water reservoir uh, from water reservoir where it is pumped to the engine and then it is directly fed into the uh, water reservoir then uh, second one is a closed or double circuit system so here you can see water reservoir from this pump will uh, circulate water to the uh, heat exchanger okay and uh, it will gets heat from the uh, wa the water which is coming out from the uh, engine and it gets again it goes to the water reservoir whereas here the hot water which is coming out from the diesel engine is gives heat to the uh, to the secondary circuit uh, uh, water and then uh, it is gets cooled and then it goes to engine okay these are the two types and there are uh, several types uh, uh, various methods are used for circulating the water around the cylinder and cylinder head those are uh, thermo shippen cooling uh, forced or uh, pumped cooling cooling with the thermostatic regulator pressurized water cooling and evaporative cooling so we will see one by one in brief uh, thermo chiffon cooling this is the line diagram of thermo chiffon cooling so the basis of uh, this type of cooling is the is the fact that uh, the water becomes light on heating okay so in figure show, it shows that thermo chiffon cooling arrangement where uh, the top of the radiator is connected to the top water jacket by a pipe and bottom of the radiator uh, to the bottom of the water jacket so i i can see upper hose connection and lower hose connection through this uh, it is connected to water jacket and uh, water travels down the radiator across which air is passed uh, to cool it the air flow can take place due to the vehicle motion or a fan can be provided for the purpose but here the diesel engine is uh, ideal uh, in uh, uh, ideal condition so uh, a fan is provided in order to give uh, in order to circulate air this system has uh, advantages uh, and and also disadvantages the advantages is that uh, it is quite simple and uh, automatic and uh, is without any water pump unless uh, there is leak or uh, there is nothing to get out of the order okay but uh, it's having uh, major uh, shortcomings or uh, disadvantages okay uh, disadvantages in
in this system uh, the radiator needs to be kept above the engine cylinder level for the flow of water to the engine under the gravity uh, for the efficient functioning of the system okay and uh, the circulation of hot water is started only when engines becomes hot because uh, there should be some density the density the buoyancy effect if it uh, if there is any uh, density difference then only it will uh, moves so that's why the circulation of hot water is started only when engine becomes hot and the thermo chiffon cooling uh, system is not suitable for heavy duty engines where a, where a very high rate of heat transfer is required uh, so it, uh, the heat transfer rate is very small and the level of water in the radiator should be kept above delivery pipes to avoid an excessive temperature rise of uh, cooling water uh, and the formation of steam in this system the temperature of the cooling water should be uh, should strictly maintained okay it should not be allowed uh, to increase more than 80 degree centigrade so uh, thermo chiffon system is not widely used at a present next we will see thermostatic cooling so this is the line diagram for uh, thermostatic cooling so here uh, uh, two lower cylinder barrel uh, temperature may result in a uh, severe corrosion damage due to uh, condensation of acids on the barrel wall so to avoid such a situation it is customary to use a thermostat a thermostat is nothing but a device Uh, we, uh, where you can control the temperature okay so uh, such a thermostat to, to stop a flow of coolant below a preset cylinder a uh, barrel temperature so you can set the temperature and uh, uh, you can uh, control by using the thermostat most modern cooling system employ a, a thermostatic device which uh, prevents the water in the engine jacket from circulating through the radiator for cooling until its temperature has reached to a value suitable for efficient engine operation okay so the uh, figure shows a line diagram of a thermostatically controlled cooling system uh, so it comes here it, it consists of a thermostat you can see uh, a, a thermostat in this uh, diagram so the thermostat consists of a bellows which are made up of thin copper tubes uh, partially filled with a volatile liquid like uh, ether or methyl alcohol okay so volatile liquid changes into vapor at the correct working temperature uh, thus creating enough pressure to expand the bellows okay it will expand okay then uh, the temperature at which the thermostat operates is set by manufacturer and cannot be altered it is uh, set by manufacturer itself so the movement of the bellows opens uh, the main wall in the ratio of temperature rise uh, uh, when increase in temperature and increasing or restricting the flow of water from the engine to the radiator so by doing this uh, when the normal temperature of the engine has been reached the wall uh, uh, when it is reached the wall gets open and circulation of water commences it it will start okay so when the unit is uh, closed the gas condenses and uh, so the pressure uh, which will falls down the bellows collapses and the thermostat uh, sits on it uh, on its seat and uh, circulation around thermostat stops okay so when the thermostat valve is not open and the engine is running uh, running the water being pumped uh, uh, is which will pump rises in pressure and causes the pressure relief valve to open okay thus the water completes the circulation through the bypass okay uh, so it is shown in a diagram okay uh, the, when the temperature of water around the engine cylinder rises up to a certain limit it causes the uh, thermostat valve to open 
so yeah, at that time the thermostat valve it gets open and the pressure of water being pumped uh, of uh, which will falls down and pressure relief valve gets closes so the flow of cooling water in the normal circuit commences through the radiator this accelerates the rise of temperature of the cylinder walls and uh, wa uh, water and more power is developed in a, a few a few moments or uh, a few seconds of the starting of the engine so uh, this uh, by this we uh, the thermostat cooling will works next we will see evaporative cooling so this is the line diagram for evaporative cooling so in this system uh, it is also called stream or uh, steam or vapor cooling the temperature of the cooling water is allowed to reach a temperature of 100 degree centigrade okay this method is of cooling utilizes the high latent heat of vaporization of water to obtain cooling with the minimum water i hope you got this point so the figure shows uh, the cooling circuit uh, it is in such a way that the coolant is always uh, liquid but the steam formed is flashed off in a separate vessel okay so the uh, makeup water is formed is uh, sent back for cooling this system uses for cooling of many types of industrial engines so you can see it uh, here uh, the flow of steam okay so uh, this kind of uh, evaporative cooling uh, uh, is adopted in uh, many industries so it's having uh, advantages uh, of uh, water cooling uh, it, uh, by com uh, comparing with air cooling the water cooling the compact design of engine with appreci uh, appreciable uh, smaller uh, front end area is possible okay or uh, we can the fuel consumption of a high compression liquid cooled engine is uh, rather lower than the air cooled one okay these are the advantages uh, the, and uh, apart from this the size of the engine does not involve in serious problem as far as the design of cooling system is concerned but uh, even uh, the what cooling system is also having some disadvantages like uh, uh, the system depends uh, in which supply of water for circulation in the jacket is required so uh, power absorbed by the pump for water circulation is considerably higher than that for uh, cooling fans in the event of uh, failure of cooling system serious damage may be caused to the engine so cost of the system is considerably high so these are the some disadvantages okay so